Hey everybody, it's Paul from Last Level Tech again. I'm back with a new video uh, with a bit of a blast from the past, whilst also with uh, bringing up to date with the new. So if you remember, about two years ago, I did a video of the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Model B Raspberry Pi, which I've got here in front of me. And uh, yeah, we did an unboxing video of it, showed it off, showed the uh, the connectors, everything else about the little uh, system on the chip, size of a credit card, little system board, beautiful system for what it was. Um, and it's been doing very, very well for a lot of good people around the world. Um, and they've come out in the past uh, week or so with this, the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus. Again, 512 mega RAM, you can see on the front there. Uh, my friends over at um, Newark Element 14, which you can see on the website here, and their website is uh, newark.com, N-E-W-A-R-K.com. They reached out and said, hey, you did a, ra a good unboxing video previously of the Model B. Would you like to do an unboxing video of the Model B Plus if we sent you a sample? I said, sure, no problem. I'd love to see the uh, Model B Plus and let's check it out and see what the differences are. Um, Element 14, one of the main distributors in the world of um, the Raspberry Pi uh, for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, Newark.com uh, is for North America, although I believe they probably ship worldwide as well. Um, in the UK, where I am, you can use Farnell Element 14 as well. They will get you your Raspberry Pi as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, and I highly recommend you go check them out because um, these products are really cool for what they are and they're really cheap. I mean, the, uh, the mo Model B Plus in the UK is twenty four ninety nine. I mean, that's nothing for what this is. Absolutely nothing. Um, so uh, I'm going to do a comparison, do an unboxing video of the B. Uh, let's take this out of the way for the moment uh, of the B Plus. We do a comparison to the, uh, the original uh, B from two years ago. So let's open the box first. Well, have a look, let's have a look at the box first of all. So Raspberry Pi Model B Plus. Raspberry Pi Foundation logo on the top there and in the middle. Element14.com. We've just got a series of Element14, Raspberry Pi, Element14 and Raspberry Pi on the sides. And on the back, got some information about the contents. So we have a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus featuring the 700 megahertz Broadcom a CPU with 512 mega RAM, which in this instance is exactly the same as what the B was. We have a 40 pin extended GP general purpose input output header, which is larger than this one. This one only had 26 pins, I believe. Uh, we have a full size HDMI, which is the same. Four USB ports this time. Big improvement, this only had two. If you had the model, the, the first model, I think it only had one as well. So um, yeah, the Model A. Uh, so four is definitely a good improvement. Micro SD card slot, good improvement again. This, as you can see, has the S the, the full size SD card, which is quite big and cumbersome. Anyway, we'll check them out. Uh, Raspberry Pi Tran uh, Foundation and some patent marks. That's fine. Let's open the box. Inside, the last one only had a manual and the board, and this one only has a manual and a board. Nothing else in the box. When I say manual, it's basically just uh, compliance and safety information, regulatory information. Uh, please retain this information for future for re future reference. Do not use in heat. Do not use in water. Usual kind of stuff. Um, I think the box does say, yeah, getting started. So get your free download to go to element14.com slash raspberry pi um, where you'll find out some, uh, I guess, some uh, download information about the actual product itself. So we've got an anti-static bag. It's already opened. And here we have the Raspberry Pi Model B. Plus, so what's it like in size comparison to the old one? I, w I hear you ask. Well, let's have a look and see, shall we? Uh, I did put a heatsink on this. I mean, you don't need to. I just had one lying around, so I stuck it on there um, on the GPU. But actual lengthwise, they are pretty much the same. Bang on. And width, same again. So what you can see is they've got rounded edges this time on the B+. Plus. Nice uh, chamfered kind of rounded edges all around the actual main circuit board. And this one, pointy, nasty pointy edges. So at least that's a, that's a nice little change, I suppose. And what else have we got? So we have movement on the board. The board is quite significantly changed. Um, so the B on the top, the B plus on the bottom. You can see the differences where the HDMI ports have shifted. The CPU has been shifted. The GPU has been shifted. 
Um, the general input output header is, is obviously a lot larger on this one compared to the original B, so that's going to be much more used to a lot of people for programming on this device. Um, I mean, some of the things that these guys, uh, the, you know, the, the people have come up with on these devices is absolutely fantastic. I mean, me alone, I use it primarily. Um, I have used it for Linux and uh, messing about with Linux and stuff, um, but I use it primarily as a media device. So uh, if you look for openelect.tv, there's a Raspberry Pi build for XBMC OpenELEC straight onto a memory card boot up full on media player you know what i mean network media player it's absolutely fantastic and of course because the cpu and and gpu combination is 1080p um h264 compliant brilliant for you know whatever you're using whether, whether it's local content or streaming content off different add-ons for xbmc absolutely works fantastic it's really good um so, and like again i'll go back to the price these are 25 pounds in the uk that's nothing um, of course you only get the board on its own but you know you can pick up off ebay you can pick a, a cheap case of some kind like i had an acrylic case for this one for six pounds or something i don't know what it was um we've got a series of different serial headers different headers here another p header on the top of there they seem to have disappeared along with b this header here which you can just about make out has disappeared along with b i'm guessing that's kind of because it's been incorporated into the uh B plus GPIO header. Um, okay, so the original had composite output and earphone output. Uh, so composite video and stereo output. And I think that's being incorporated into a single four pin connector here, which we can just make out. I'll try and uh, zoom in a little bit there. You can see on that uh, that little side there, there is a, a four pin connector, which you can use for um, video and composite video and audio out. Preferably, you you want to be using this though. You want to be using the HDMI, which is uh, 1080p compliant. Um, with uh, I think it's HDMI 1.3 and 1.4 compliant. Don't think it's 1.4 A or B or anything like that compliant. But uh, you know that's n you don't need anything beyond that at the moment anyway. Uh, let's have a look at this side. So we've looked at the GPIO header. Let's compare the sides. So obviously the main difference straight away: two USB. For USB, much more useful if you're going to have keyboard, mouse, uh, wireless dongle, anything else kind of plugged in here that you know your Linux distro that you're using, whether it's Debian or something else, might uh, recognize the drivers of. Um, it's it's definitely much more useful to have those kind of uh, input uh, inputs for your devices. Uh, makes it a lot more user friendly. Uh, we've got still got a 10100 NIP card, although we now have lights, activity lights, which is useful because there's no activity lights on this. Uh, but we do have activity lights on the uh, uh, uplink and uh, uh, status lights for uh, the network card on this uh, particular B plus version, which is a massive improvement again. It's, re it's really helpful for people um, programming on these devices. Uh, okay, what else have we got? Again, this board here. Let's look at the back. So, again, there's your full size SD card slot on the original B. Takes up a big chunk of the board on the bottom side micro sd on the side on the bottom of the uh, the b plus a lot more user friendly these days a lot you know the size of it's a lot more friendly you don't have a massive uh, uh, sd card sticking out of your case which is what used to happen which would happen there you know your case would end up at this point and then you'd have just this whole series you know like a, like a whole centimeter of, uh, of of sd card just sticking out the side which you really don't need um, I have got an SD card here, a micro SD card here, which I've got an SD FanDisk 2 gig, micro standard micro SD card. And when I plug it in, you'll see it's just a tiny little bit sticking out, which is perfect for when you need to just push in and push out to get uh, to release the actual SD card. So there's a lot of a series of good minor improvements, definitely from the Raspberry, found, the Raspberry Pi Foundation on this device. Um, again, I love to see what people do with these devices on the net. You go on YouTube and look at some of the uh, modifications people have put onto the Raspberry Pi, what the projects they've used it for. I mean, I've seen it for uh, schools of using them as, as technology projects, you know, because it's, you know, 25 pounds, it can be considered a disposable device. So they can take a risk and say, right, we're going to attach it to a weather balloon and send it miles up in the air and take photos of the surrounding area with a, a, a camera that you can plug into a GPIO header and program it in Linux. and and they get some spectacular results and, and they can take the risk of, you know, when it comes back down to, go to earth that it might be damaged, you know, we can easily replace it. Um, you know, you're not going to get that with anything else. And that's what makes this product so, so fantastic. Um, you, know, the, you know, the less affluent countries in the world that need to uh, 
to, to learn about programming and, and computers and computer science and hardware. You know, the, these, these kind of devices are fantastic for those developing nations. Um, and for even just a bedroom coder who just wants a device that will plug in, easily uh, run Linux and allow them to start programming in whatever language they want to try and learn, get some input output you know, from the device quite quickly. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can, you know, you, t you can just sell this to your kid and, and, and just say, hey, crack on. This is what we kind of need to get the, uh, the, the bedroom coders kind of back from the, uh, the 80s, 90s, uh, which kind of it's been a bit of a dark art over the, the, the past decade or two. Um, so, yeah, that's the Raspberry Pi um, Model B plus. I mean, for improvements wise, hoping, you know, we, we'll see the Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation release a Raspberry Pi 2 in the next I don't know, year, maybe two years. You know, the obvious improvements would be gigabit Ethernet, uh, a, a higher grade system on a chip. You know, th two years ago, the 700 megahertz chip, Broadcom chip that this has uh, was pretty decent for what it was uh, at the time. But, you know, things have moved on very, very quickly, especially in, in technology and especially in two years. Um, so, you know, ARM processors of, you know, of, of plus one gigahertz, you know, maybe even 1.5 gigahertz these days aren't, um, are, are pr pretty much considered the norm in, in your phones and everything else. So uh, maybe in time that the, the, ARM uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation might be able to develop a chip or get a chip um, with those kind of speeds uh, for relatively good costs and keep the, pr the price down because that's essentially the main goal of this project. Um, and uh, that's it. Uh, let's have a look. You've also got the power, which has moved over onto this side, which is facing the uh, HDMI, which was different than before because the power was on the side, which was over there by the SD card rather than where the SD HDMI is. There is no power on and off button still, which would be another in uh, kind of improvement I could uh, recommend. Maybe it would be nice if they could just put some kind of button on there that maybe uh, case developers could, you know, could easily put a, a button onto their case you know it's not even something that the, the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves would need to really worry about they just put some kind of button that could be easily pressed and depressed to, um, to actually turn the device on rather than just plugging power directly into the, the board um, but they're just the kind of little you know improvements that we could be make but you still have to commend the development of the project and uh, and, and what the Raspberry Pi, pra uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation are doing and, and for Element 14 for di distributing the, uh, the board as well so um, and what I'm going to do is uh, quickly just boot this up. Um, I have got OpenELEC pre-configured on this X, uh, SD card. Just to give you a quick demonstration of the actual product working. Um, so I will move my camera to face here, to face the TV. If you just bear with me for a second, I'll plug it in. So as you can see, we've got HDMI in. A little power connector, which you probably have already if you've got some kind of Android phone. I'm going to plug in a network cable and my wireless keyboard and mouse dongle which I'll just plug in there so let's plug it there there are lights LEDs here which we can just see which will be in input uh, are basically displaying power and activity um, the 2 gig micro SD card slot uh, or micro SD card I had works fine this um, 32 gig micro SD HC uh, if you can just see it here this didn't work. So I think there are a variety of uh, websites out there which will confirm the different makes and models of SD card which will work for you. Let's turn on my TV. Okay. And move this up slightly again. Okay, we're on HDMI 1. Okay, so let's power up the board. You'll see, just, just about see the lights have turned on. Activity light is there. And it goes straight into open elect for me, XBMC, uh, which we'll just see in a second. And of course, you can run your Debian, Linux, I think there are other uh, bound to be other distribution, uh, Raspberry Pi distributed versions of, uh, of Linux out there, that's for sure. Um, and you know, you get your full GUI experience, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and basically have fun. And learn to use the device in different ways, you know, that's what these things are all about. And there we go. Boots up in a couple of seconds. And I can use my wireless keyboard and mouse to uh, move around once I've oops, once I've plugged the power onto it correctly. There we go. My full on media center, which is from a twenty five pounds Raspberry Pi. So there you go. That is the uh, the unboxing of the Raspberry Pi Model B. 
um, and the comparison with the original Model B. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, please rate and subscribe. If you like the product, go to uh, element14.com uh, or newark.com, N-E-W-A-R-K.com and, um, and get yourself one. There's no reason not to. They're so cheap, you might as well. Um, and until next time, I will, uh, I'll check you guys out later. Bye now.